The taboo surrounding menstruation seems to have taken root right from the time of historical cultures. In Judaism and Christianity, menstruation is believed to be the punishment for the disobedience of Eve who ate the forbidden fruit against God's instructions. The doctors in the Victorian era labeled the process as an illness and menstruating women were said to be unwell or out of order. Even in ancient Egypt, where women were treated better than any of the major civilizations in the world, they were restricted from work and holy places during their menstruation. Even in the 21st century, we seem to be stuck in the same age-old practices. Menstruating women in many religions are not allowed to enter temples or holy places as they are considered impure. This perceived impurity has given rise to various misconceptions regarding the process. From the practice of menstrual huts to exclusion from day-to-day -day activities, a woman on periods faces extreme alienation in some cultures even today. Suggestive phrases like on the rag, aunt Flo and the curse reflect the attitude of the society towards this process. Peggy, of course I can't go swimming. You know I've got the curse. I got my first periods when I was in 8th standard and I didn't have much of an idea about what it was all about. The first experience of it was I had to share it with my sister and uh, she helped me understand what the process was and how it was going to be. Uh, basically everybody in my class knew what periods were and Whisper came to our school to market their product and they gave us an entire afternoon of a seminar to tell us what it all was. It was kind of scary because every time they said this should happen or this shouldn't happen, you should go consult the doctor. But the thing is, it wasn't complete, the seminar that they gave us. They, they never told us about uh, it's the walls of the uterus that bleed because you don't have a baby in there for that month. We never got the complete information. During my school days, um, it, I was just 14 years old and uh, all my classmates, uh, nobody were aware of how we wash the napkin and we have to throw it. So, uh, so the disposal of napkin was something, a weird experience we all underwent because the toilets were very nasty. We didn't have a proper dustbin to dispose. The religious and cultural restrictions imposed on a woman during her periods add to the stigma surrounding it. I belong to a religion where we do consider menstruation as a taboo. So I was actually prevented from uh, attending functions or even going to temples or you know, go near the puja area or even touch my mother when she's out going for any uh, temples or anything of that sort. When I was in grade 10, uh, maybe after the exams, I went with my cousins to uh, some place uh, in Mangalore. There I had been to some temple. There I got my periods and I, my mother was not with me. I couldn't tell anybody. So all of a sudden it happened and I kept quiet. I went to the temple and after that I felt very guilty. That thing is there in the mind that uh, you shouldn't go to the temple. Then later after five days or something again I went to the same temple <laughs> and then said sorry to God, <laughs> did some puja and came. <laughs> Many women are reluctant to speak out even when they face problems like severe cramps, abnormal bleeding or other irregularities. Obviously that reluctance will be there, um, so we have all these uh, metaphors for it, riding the uh, red wave or <laughs> uh, cramps or something like that. We never say, okay, I've got my periods, I'm bleeding. We never say I'm bleeding. Actually, I don't have any questions about the menses. I don't have any questions about the menses. I don't have any questions about the menses. ಸಂಕೋಚ <laughs> 
ನನಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಾಗ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ಸೊ ಮಾತಾಡಕ್ಕೆ ಶುರು ಮಾಡಿದೆ ಸೊ ಟಿಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾರೇಜ್ ಆಗೋವರೆಗೂ ನನಗೆ ಆ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಇತ್ತೇ ಇತ್ತು ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಮ್ಯಾರೇಜ್ ಅದು ಸರಿ ಹೋಗ್ತಾ ಬಂದು ನಾವು ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಬಿಕಮಿಂಗ್ ರೆಗ್ಯುಲರ್ ನನಗೆ ಚಿಕನ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ಥರ ಯಾವುದು ಇದ್ ಇಲ್ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಸುಳಿವು ಇಲ್ಲದೇ ಇದ್ರೂ ಕೂಡ ನನ್ನ ಮಗಳಿಗೆ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಹೇಳಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ನನಗೆ ಯಾವತ್ತು ಅದು ಅಷ್ಟು ನನಗೆ ಮೆಚೂರಿಟಿ ಇರಲಿಲ್ಲ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಒಂದು ಸರಿ ನನ್ನ ಮಗಳು ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಫೇಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇರೋದು ಗೊತ್ತಾದ ಮೇಲೆ ನಾನು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ತಿಳುವಳಿಕೆ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಂಡು ಅವಳಿಗೆ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಅದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಇಂಡಿಕೇಷನ್ ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಹೋದೆ ಯಾವ ಥರ ಇರಬೇಕು ಎಕ್ಸಸೈಸ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಅಂತೆಲ್ಲ ರೈಟ್ ನೌ ಶೀಸ್ ಫಾಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಮೀ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನನ್ನ ಅವಳಿಗೆ ಏನು ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ಸ್ ಇದ್ರು ನನ್ನ ಹತ್ರ ಹೇಳ್ಕೊತಾಳೆ ನಾನು ಅವಳಿಗೆ ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಕೊಡ್ತೀನಿ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಷನ್ ಐ ಗಾಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಮೈ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಗೊತ್ತ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ಸ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ and yeah they obviously tell friends and uh, we, we they used to talk about it and i never understood it and then uh, eventually even i i went through the same experience and um, once i got my period then i went and told my mom and uh, okay then she sat me down and explained what it's all about and and stuff like that how i go about it from the beginning it was quite irregular and then um she she noticed it in the beginning and then she she told me that uh, look it's 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 not fine it's not happening how it's supposed to be so um we went to a gynecologist i think we changed doctors also uh, i think twice or thrice so one doctor who i went to she actually sat me down and explained and uh, said why all these problems happen and uh, explained why um, children nowadays undergo stress that being one of the main reasons and she said it's it's okay because um me and my mom weren't uh, so educated we didn't have information so she actually told told us that not to worry it's okay because um 70% of the girls go through this problem when a completely natural process like menstruation faces this kind of suppression in a society it affects one of the most important aspects the menstrual hygiene of a woman this is especially true for the rural female population without proper awareness the women in rural areas have no idea about what is happening with their body or what they can do about it it's been about 6 years since i started working on menstrual hygiene basically awareness and large part of my work is in rural india i think the biggest thing that i found missing was the ability to talk about menstruation without inhibitions this is not just among girls this is also among women uh, let me tell you even teachers i've done sessions where the teacher would feel shy and blush and look away and the children because you know children will react to you based on how you react so if i'm standing in front of them and talking the children are also talking but the teachers would feel so embarrassed because they have carried the inhibitions for a much longer period of time right so just that inability to talk about it is the biggest hurdle to even seek hygiene because if you don't talk about it how do you know you have a problem how do you know you have excessive bleeding how do you know you might be anemic how do you know your white discharge is not normal and you might need to seek help and if you don't talk about it it basically means that you're ashamed you don't like your body and when you don't like it it is obvious you don't take care of it girls have shared stories about how they thought that they are dying of cancer one girl she thought you know so much about it that she said i'm going to die and let me not tell my mother because she'll be so worried so let me just quietly die and believe me she didn't use anything all through her first period she just bled into her clothes every now and then went to the bathroom and washed herself there was a girl in assam who thought that she had somehow something had bit her there and that's how she started bleeding she was terrified <laughs> there were girls who thought that they were cursed for most of the girls the day they got their first period is the first time they ever heard about it so you can imagine the shock <laughs> until a few seconds before you're perfectly fine and suddenly you're bleeding from your vagina of all places how do you even word it why is there so much of stigma attached to menstruation in spite of it being a natural biological process and the question that takes relevance at this point is about how aware men are regarding periods are they given enough information to realize that the concept of impurity is just a social construct some some idea about it but i cannot just what do you think it is it's a god gift thing so it's 
very painful for them. No one can wear that. Very difficult for them to come out for first time. Not in three days. For the first starting two days, they won't be having their senses, mm -hmm. what they're talking and what. I think it is a biological phenomenon. And uh, I think that there is too much a taboo associated to it, right? Like, uh, guys normally are not very comfortable with the topic of periods uh, of menstruation. Menstruation, in a way, alienates women labeling them as impure and the process as unspeakable. The fact that majority of men lack awareness or knowledge about it is enough evidence to support this observation. With the rise in crimes against women in the country, a relevant question would be whether these misconceptions and lack of understanding about the female body could eventually affect the way they perceive women in life. At some point, if the women's uh, sexual issues are being hid or covered, or they're not, they're not asked to go out, uh, or they're they're not explained exactly what's you know happening in that period, then obviously it, it's a kind of a mystery, and you know it's it's not clear for the the boys or the men also as to what's exactly happening. So I think this whole uh, the sex education that uh, needs to be done at that particular phase might address a lot of these issues, both for the boys to understand their own you know, their own mentality and sexuality and about women and their sexuality. I think it's important to, you know, uh, highlight it under the whole umbrella of uh, sex education. Menstruation is, again, in a way linked to sexuality and it is to be explained um, at, at the right uh, time. And if, if that is not done, uh, you know, the boys or men at that age might uh, have their own misconceptions or beliefs you know, either through their own families or through their friends or relatives uh, and that might be a wrong perception and that perception might carry on and it might overall affect their perception of uh, women in some way. The notion of impurity, the silence associated with periods and the invisibility of the process affect a man's perception of a woman. This can extend into his personal and social life, disturbing his relationships and distorting his opinions. Can raising awareness bring about a perceptible change in this? People do not have a complete knowledge about it. They have only perceptions about it. They look at it as something, you know, where it is it is for the women, so why should I bother about it? As a result, even though a lot of information is available in the internet, everything, many of the, uh, you know, men would not have even gone through it to understand that. Because to that extent, men have not shown importance to that. Probably they would have uh, gathered some little information uh, uh, if they are married, primarily because they wanted to know whether it will have any direct relevance to their sex life. Other than that, scientifically what it is, how does it happen and why should it happen to women alone, not to men, I think very few men only would have gone uh, in depth into it and there are a lot of misconceptions about it. This could be like this, this could be like that. As a result, you know, they tend to uh, understand things differently or rather, you know, they have a limited knowledge or a wrong knowledge about it. So to, if you make it uh, known to people, uh, they get a better idea about what it is and uh, uh, more and more uh, men also will start uh, uh, providing a supportive role at that time also that they will also take the responsibility of probably sharing it or rather you know um, uh, helping their children in uh, knowing this better so that way I definitely feel that it is not only supportive but also you know to clear all the misconceptions or the wrong perceptions they have on that they should have the way men are in rural areas and in urban areas is diametrically the opposite Whenever I've travelled to more rural areas, and in fact if it was tribal areas, for instance in Karnataka I've travelled to Gollarahattis, these are nomadic tribes. There, it was the men who spoke to us. Men did the sessions for the women. So it is not a closed topic and men talk freely about it. Now you contrast this with the urban men and they just don't know what to do if you say the word period. <laughs> because the urban women in the pretext of being very brave have actually just closed the subject. There's no open conversations here. And who has to talk to men? It's basically all of us, each of us women. Every time we have to go to the toilet and change a pad, let's not hide it and go. The onus is on women, not on men. If we started being normal about menstruation around men, believe me, they'll be very open, very warm and very understanding. But we have to get over our inhibitions. The ball is in our court. How can you not know about this? Ridiculous!
टेरेबल हमने हमने भी जैसा कि सुना है कि जब जब प्रॉब्लम्स होती है तो कौन सी प्रॉब्लम ये ये जब प्रॉब्लम्स होती है कौन सी प्रॉब्लम कौन सी प्रॉब्लम कौन सी प्रॉब्लम जब पीरियड्स की जब प्रॉब्लम्स होती है प्रॉब्लम हाँ तो जब प्रॉब्लम होती है ना तो पीरियड्स नहीं होते मैं ये बताना चाहती हूँ आपको ऐसा कुछ होता है तो people just start accepting periods as normality then you should probably put it in your movies in conversations maybe have talk shows on the news about it as informative talk shows or just anything just mention it in the passing and people should get used to it with a bunch of youngsters and celebrities who are coming forward and being vocal about periods menstrual activism is gaining strength all over the country The website Menstrupedia by Aditi Gupta is another innovative step towards raising awareness on the subject. With their simple comic books and blogs aimed at youngsters, the website has already gained nationwide attention. Now, more than ever, there is a need to break the silence and secrecy about this natural biological process. With the growing conversation regarding the subject, we can only hope for a period-friendly environment for every woman. sometime in the near future